welcome in to my Facebook followers. Those of you that have been following me since I returned from sabbatical, uh, you know I do this show called Jimmy Rants, and so I come on Facebook and I simulcast uh, both here at the Living La Vida Low Carb uh, Facebook page, and then here is my personal page. Uh, it's funny because this one has 5,000 followers. They max you out at 5,000. I guess they think it's not possible you have more than 5,000 friends. This one here, I have almost 50,000 followers. I can't see the comments there, but I can see every comment and everybody that comes in here. Hello, Joanne, Norma, Louise, Beth, Norma uh, says good morning. So does Louise, Mary, Brian Short. Come on in, you guys. We're about to get started with another episode of Jimmy Rants. <clears throat> and it's going to be an interesting one here today. Hello, Tracy. Thanks for being here as well. So, yeah, um, rolling right along, being back in the groove of things. Uh, several people have written me private messages saying, what's it like being back? Are you, is it weird for you? And what a lot of them uh, I've responded with is, it's familiar, but it's different, if that makes sense. So it's familiar in as much as I know how to talk. I didn't forget how to talk while I was gone on sabbatical, <clears throat> but... It is different in a lot of ways because my mindset has changed. I went through a lot during the sabbatical um, that I didn't expect to happen. And so in that realm, it's been, it's just different. It's like, I don't know how to explain it other than it's familiar, but it's unfamiliar at the same time. I know that sounds like an oxymoron, but... Um, still kind of charting, uh, going through the waters, trying to figure out what all this means um, and how I move forward. But um, yeah, there's a lot to say. I'm, I'm not going anywhere. I've got plenty of things to say. Hello, Peggy. Brian says, Katie Marie. Who's Katie Marie? <clears throat> all right, so we are about to get started with Jimmy Rand. So if you guys are ready, we're gonna pop on and do this thing. So you ready? Here we go. What's up you guys? Come on in, make yourselves at home. We're here with another episode of Jimmy Rants. And as always, you can access this show in archived form over at the official website. It's jimmyrants.com. And jimmyrants.com gives you access to all the old videos that we've done. We've done a ton of content. Started this show like a year and a half ago. Uh, primarily on Instagram Live, we now have allowed our Facebook friends to come on over. So I got a couple of my Facebook pages here as well. Uh, we generally talk about pretty much whatever's on Jimmy's mind at the moment. Um, earlier in the week, did a lot of childhood trauma stuff. We'll come back to that soon, by the way. Uh, but there was a big demand to have more talk about um, health and diet stuff. So I'm back to a little bit of old school Jimmy Rants. If you're familiar with the way I've done it from the very beginning, um, I usually take a topic and rant about it or I get a headline like I have today, which we will talk about here <clears throat> in just a moment. I did want to let you know today is the debut of a brand new version of a podcast I've been doing for years. Uh, a lot of you know me and Dr. Will Cole are the co-hosts of a show called Keto Talk. And so we've been doing Keto Talk uh, before Dr. Cole, it was Dr. Adam Nally, Doc Muscles. Uh, and we've been doing that show answering questions about keto and, and doing health headlines and blah, blah, blah. Today is the debut of a new direction with the show. Uh, and the new direction does not mean we're gonna stop talking about keto or stop talking about health. It's just gonna be from more of a uh, widespread perspective on health. Um, and so we're changing the name from Keto Talk to Real Talk. So if you're already subscribed to Keto Talk, you will automatically get uh, the Real Talk. We're just going to change the name of it on Apple Podcasts and Stitcher and everywhere. Um, and you'll notice a very different sound. Got a new intro audio, but it's still me and Will. And Will and I have a great relationship. We've been able to have a really special bond when we're on the air together. So that is not changing. It's just we're not stuck in the mold of only talking about keto. Now we'll talk about all kinds of things as you will hear in today's first episode 
Uh, next week, we already have lined up Dr. Paul Saladino uh, to talk about um, a tweet that he sent out that seemed to fat shame anyone who is bigger than they need to be uh, and talking about health. So I wanted to have him on the show to have some real talk. And he stood in there and, and answered uh, our questions. It was really, really a good conversation. So definitely next Thursday, check that out. But today is where you can listen to Real Talk for the first time. LLVLC.com is your central hub for everything, uh, even Jimmy Rance, if you want to find some links. All of my links, LLVLC.com. All right, let's talk about what I'm going to share today here on Jimmy Rance because we have uh, a lot of hysteria going on out there right now. Perhaps you've heard that there is this disease epidemic, pandemic, that's about to embark upon the whole world. It's been such hysteria that on Friday we saw uh, interest, uh, or we saw the stock market go to record highs last Friday. Then on Monday, record lows. Then on Tuesday, record high. It just, and then the, the feds cut interest rates by half a point, trying to stem the hysteria. What am I talking about? It's this stupid coronavirus. If you live in the world right now, and you haven't heard of the coronavirus, you're living under a rock. Because literally every news outlet in the world, from TV to radio to print to online, everybody and their mama is in a complete hissy fit hysteria over the coronavirus. And of course, the first death was reported in America. And then, and then oh my, it's the first one in Texas. Oh my, it's the first one in Georgia. Oh my. And it just seems like we've gotten to this fevered, pitch over something that really, for the most part, has not impacted the vast majority of the world's population. And this is not new, guys. I've seen it with the SARS virus, remember that? Or the mad cow, or the swine flu, remember that one, the bird flu? This is something that has come out every few years for as long as I've been alive. And I think all the hysteria over the coronavirus is just a bunch of friggin' nonsense. Like seriously, get a life, people. If you have a strong immune system and you're eating a healthy diet, there is no reason why you can't beat off this thing if it hits you. But I think if your immune system is strong, you probably won't get it to begin with. So why are we all up in arms? I'll tell you why. It's eyeballs for the media. And you gotta remember this, whenever things like this happen, it's always about ratings. They're not interested in public health. They're not interested in you as a person and giving you good information. Yeah, maybe your local news is, but you've got to know, they know people are worried about this because they've ri risen up, the stirred everybody up. So oh, let's feed them all of this content. Think about any big news story whenever it hits. What do all the stations do? All the cable news, all the, all the everybody. It's all over the place. So you've just got to know that this coronavirus thing is probably being way, 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 way blown out of proportion for what it actually is, okay? But that doesn't stop people from writing about it. I found this article on lifehacker.com. And it was an article written uh, to basically say, hey, all you people who eat a ketogenic diet, all you people who eat carnivore, I'm hearing you out there, the, the author of the article, I'm hearing you out there talk about how your diet is going to protect you from getting the coronavirus. And I'm here to tell you, you're dead wrong. So I thought it was a really interesting funny article to a keto and carnivore diet fan uh, to read. The headline says, no, the keto diet won't give you special protection from COVID-19. That's the uh, official name of the virus that we're calling coronavirus. 
The ways to protect yourself from contra contracting the coronavirus are simple and boring. Wash your hands. Yes, please wash your hands. Although, let me pause on that one. There is this need for people to think we need to be ultra, ultra clean. So you got these people doing the hand sanitizers. You got these people, you know, aggressively washing their hands. And not that there's anything in and of itself wrong with those things in the midst of something like this being out there. But it could be argued when you're too clean, it makes you more susceptible to disease. And so we know the microbiome in your body is meant to deal with like foods and other toxins that come into your body. But what if, what if the microbiome microbiome on your skin can protect you from this thing. It's something to think about. Now, don't go to the bathroom and not wash your hands. Gross. But just know when, when you use things like hand sanitizer, when you wash your hands obsessively, you are washing off good bacteria that might help you fight this thing. Now, again, I get it. People touch surfaces that have this virus on it and then they spread it. I know, I know, but I'm just telling you this obsession about washing your hands so much like that um, is a little out of hand. I think if you're generally clean and you've got clean hands, you know, go play in the dirt a little bit after you clean your hands, just wash off the dirt, and then you've got some microbiome on there that can help deal if this thing does come into contact with you. Avoid any contact with people who might be sick. Yeah, no kidding. Who is hanging around someone who's going... <coughs> Nobody is hanging around that guy. We like avoid that guy like the plague or girl. Do they really have to put that in an article? Crazy, right? You know the drill. Some advocates of various diets, though, are saying... You also need to eat a certain way or take supplements to which our best knowledge is no. Okay, let's stop there because we're going to get into the meat of this story, all pun intended. This person that wrote this article, and if you're joining us late, we're talking about the coronavirus and there's a lot of hysteria out there about it. Um, and this article on lifehacker.com says, no, the keto diet won't protect you from the coronavirus. So... Uh, they're saying just wash your hands and stay away from sick people, but they're, they're about to mock people who say if you eat healthy and if you take supplementation that that could help boost your immune system and thus make you healthier. So they say, they poo-poo on that. They say no. No food is going to protect you from this. No amount of supplements are going to protect you from this. This is what they're claiming here. And so, I think they're dead wrong about that. No, if you're eating a crappy garbage diet and today you suddenly start to eat keto, it's not going to prevent the coronavirus. I will agree with that point. But if you have been eating keto or been eating carnivore or just been eating real food, paleo, Whole30, whatever you're doing, and you've been doing it for a period of time, guess what that has done positive for you? That's right. It has made your immune system extremely strong. And so if your immune system is strong, guess what? When any virus of any kind, coronavirus or otherwise, tries to invade your body, you are in a better position to withstand it and not succumb to the ill effects of it in your health. So let's not pretend like diet doesn't matter in this. It does. And supplementation... If you take high dose of, of vitamin D, like a lot of us do, if you take various other supplements <clears throat> that could boost your immune system, maybe some adaptogens like ashwagandha and things like that, all of those things can be beneficial towards the prevention of any Ill illness hitting you because they're boosting your immune system. So it's kind of funny to read from whoever this uh, person that wrote this on lifehacker.com uh, to read that they don't think diet has anything to do with it. Supplements have anything to do with it. It has everything to do with anything related to disease. Let's not pretend like just washing your hands and avoiding sick people could prevent this. 
Nah. If you don't have a strong immune system, just, just you wait. You will get a cold. You will have something happen to you physically because of that weakened immune system. And I'll tell you, I don't get sick. I've been a keto carnivore and leaning towards a little more carnivore. It's still keto, but um, lately, and I have found that since I've been doing that, I really just don't feel sick, don't feel weak, uh, just the opposite, I feel very strong. I know my immune system is very high and it's very strong. And it's because of the very things I put in my mouth and the things I choose not to put in my mouth. All of it matters. All right, let's get back to the article. One carnivore argued that the vitamins in meat are essential for the immune system. They're right. There are a ton of nutrient density. Uh, there, there is a ton of nutrient density in meat that can help boost your immune system. That person is not wrong. This person in this article is trying to mock them for that. But they're not wrong. You've got all your complete proteins, you've got healthy fats, you've got vitamins out the wazoo in meat. This is one argument I've made even before on Jimmy Rance is the vegetarian vegan movement try to pretend like meat is totally devoid of anything but harmful substances. That's the argument they try to make so that people will then embrace fruits and vegetables and plant-based. Well, Yes, fruits and vegetables do have nutrients in them. Interestingly, grains, which are a part of the plant-based community, grains have what's called anti-nutrients. In other words, instead of putting nutrients in your body, they're sucking the living daylights out of the nutrients in your body. And yet they push that at the bottom of the food pyramid uh, on, your, on the food plate now with the USDA dietary guidelines. They push those hard and yet they're sucking nutrients out of you. Meanwhile, meat is arguably the most nutrient-dense food you could possibly put in your mouth. The moment you stop thinking meat is healthy is the moment you've forgotten biology because biology tells you that all of the good nutrients are in meat. If you're not eating meat, I just had two ribeyes about 30 minutes ago. If you're not eating meat in your diet on a regular basis, you are depriving your body of great nutrition. You're not going to reach your fullest potential in strengthening your immune system so that when this coronavirus comes around to your area, possibly, you're not going to be harmed by it. And yet they want to mock those of us who say meat has vitamins in it that are essential to the immune system. Quite frankly, it does. Another one uh, who uses a hashtag keto wrote in their Twitter bio making a somewhat convoluted argument about metabolic syndrome and mortality rates. I think they're referring to someone saying that people who have metabolic syndrome um, will be more susceptible to the coronavirus. So <clears throat> if you have insulin resistance, which means uh, cardiometabolic markers that are out of whack, usually that's higher triglycerides, lower HDL, higher inflammation markers, uh, higher blood glucose markers, higher insulin, all of these things combined weakens your immune system and thus makes you more susceptible to not just getting the coronavirus, but to dying from it as well. I, I would be really uh, interested to know those people who have died from this coronavirus, if their death was more attributable to these things like a weakened immune system as a result of diabetes, um, Alzheimer's, which is type 3 diabetes, some other health condition, or a compromised metabolic condition. Because I can't imagine someone with a strong immune system and metabolic, uh, uh, everything, in their metabolism working well, I can't imagine that person succumbing to this thing. And yet, if you watch the evening news, what are they talking about? Or if you watch cable news, 24 7, I could probably turn on the TV over there and turn it on right now and one of the big boys on the cable networks will be saying something about the coronavirus. The hysteria does not match the reality and the reality is if you're eating healthy and you're being healthy and you're doing healthy habits and you're getting a good night's sleep and you're doing all the things, ain't gotta worry about it. I just don't understand other than 
eyeballs for news. That equals profits for those news companies that make a big deal about something that's not a big deal at all. See what I'm saying? Somehow, people who were already promoting a certain diet, whichever diet that might have been, have concluded that their favorite diet will give them a special protection against the coronavirus. Okay. I don't know that I or any of the other colleagues within the keto and carnivore community, I don't think any of us are saying that we're getting, quote, special protection against the coronavirus. Uh, coronavirus. I think what we're saying is we're giving our bodies a fighting chance by eating the way that we do. I'm sure the vegans and vegetarians are out there saying the same thing about their chosen diet as well. Um, and it's not a competition. I mean, I think the point is whatever it takes to make you healthy and to boost your own immune system, you should be doing it. And you should have been doing it all along. And if it takes the coronavirus to come into the keto and carnivore community and get serious about it, then welcome to the fray. We have steak and bacon, so stick around a while. I think you'll enjoy it. Meanwhile, actual doctors and scientists, I love how they had to put the word actual as if some of the people talking about this, I saw my friend Dr. Paul Saladino here on Instagram today writing about this after I announced I would be doing this Jimmy Rants. And he's like, and he's a medical doctor. And he's like, what is with you people, man? This is not a big deal. Uh, but actual doctors and scientists are making no such claims. Uh, let me refer you to the World Health Organization. All right. The World Health Organization. Do you know what diet they are all in for? Oh, yeah, that's right. They're all about veganism. There was uh, the, the guy that led the World Health Organization several years back now. I did a blog post about him. And he made the claim that he was making it his goal to make sure the entire planet was plant-based and that he was going to like tax meat and all kinds of things. So if we're referencing the World Health Organization's instructions on protecting yourself from the coronavirus, yeah, bite me because there ain't no way, no how you're ever going to tell me just eat a steak. You're not because you're all in on the vegan message. They say to wash your hands and stay away from sick people and not eat any particular diet. Well, that's convenient. What if eating nutrient-dense foods like red meat, dairy, even organic vegetables, if you want to add those to your diet, what is wrong with eating those? And the answer is there's nothing wrong. Nothing wrong at all. But the World Health Organization didn't say anything about that. Yeah, because eating healthy should be a well, duh, whether there is a supposed pandemic out there or not. Being healthy is not predicated on any disease being out there in the world. I remember when I was a kid when HIV and AIDS was talk, talked about with a hysteria as if everybody was going to get HIV and, and AIDS. And it was a big deal. And it's, it's a big deal. I'm not trying to diminish that. But I'm saying there are ways to boost your immune system. And it starts with when there's not some huge media story about the next worst thing in the world for your health like the coronavirus is right now. And it's called putting in the effort on a daily basis to eat and treat your body in a way that sounds like you give a crap. Because the moment you start giving a crap about your body is the moment it will reward you with robust health, strong immune system, never get sick, feel better than you've ever felt in your life, get you off of prescription medications. All of these things matter. And you don't get there until you embrace it. So secretly, I am glad that this coronavirus hysteria is out there if it pushes people towards getting serious about their health. And I think on a deep level, most people know that their diet does matter when it comes to their overall health. I think most people generally know that. Where they're confused is they don't know what diet to do. 
So that's why educating on keto, educating on healthy fats, educating on why meat is not the grand enemy in your health, all of these things is so important and why I hammer it early and often here on Jimmy Rants. World Health, Health Organization does mention in a document about managing stress that maintaining proper diet, sleep, exercise, and social contacts is important. That matches all the other general advice that you've probably seen for protecting yourself against colds and seasonal flu. Take care of yourself physically and mentally because it sure can't hurt. So at, right after telling us diet doesn't matter, then they say, oh, uh, we need a proper diet, sleep, exercise, and social contacts. Can you see they tried to have it, bo have it both ways? But then what does that mean, proper diet? I so hate it in news stories when they talk about proper diet, they use, um, or even if they just say diet, they leave it to your imagination what that's supposed to be. Now, I'm not one of these people who believes there is a one diet set for all, but I am a person who does believe there's nobody that's gonna be harmed from eating meat. There's nobody that's going, unless you have an aversion to it in some way. Uh, there's nobody that's going to be harmed by limiting processed foods, crappy garbage, sugars, grains, that kind of thing. Nobody's harmed. Nobody. But they don't define what proper diet means. And so when you don't define things and it's left to the interpretation of the reader, then a vegan reads that and says, oh, veganism. A keto person reads that, oh, I'm eating keto. A person that doesn't eat anything, uh, any kind of special diet at all, they just eat the standard American diet, oh, I should cut my fat and, and limit my calories. Do you see how that left to interpretation becomes a very dangerous thing when you put it in a generic article like this. Sleep, obvious, obviously. Exercise, and again, exercise is one of the, are we talking about strength training? Are we talking about cardio? Are we doing a mix? Are we, uh, how often, how much? Again, left to the devices of the person reading this. And then social contacts, which could be anything from online to in-person, so very interesting. A Harvard Health article goes a bit more in depth about this. If you'd like extra reassurance, it mainly ends up debunking the whole idea of boosting your immune system through your diet. And the article here says, because you can't. Eat a diet that is high in fruits and vegetables <laughs> and consider it a multivitamin if you're still worried about it. There it is. This person does not like meat. And you have to know this when you're reading these articles. These things stick out like a sore thumb to me. As I read these articles and I see all the continued promulgation of the plant-based movement, you see something like that. Well, eat a diet that's high in fruits and vegetables and consider that your multivitamin if you're really worried about your diet. In other words, all those carnivore people, all those keto people that are telling you that you should eat meat in order to boost your immune system, we know they're right. But we can't have that out there because that goes against our agenda of getting people to be plant-based. You see how this works? But you see how they manipulate it in articles like this that people actually read? It's disgusting. So in the Harvard Health article, scientists have long recognized that people who live in poverty uh, are malnourished and more vulnerable to infectious disease, whether the increased rates of disease is caused by the malnutrition's effect on the immune system is not certain. There are still relatively few studies on the effects of nutrition on the immune system of humans and even fewer studies that tie the effect of nutrition directly to the development versus the treatment of disease. Man. How many of you are currently eating real food, keto, paleo, whole 30, carnivore, intermittent fasting? How many of you are doing any of those kind of protocols nutritionally? Do you feel like your immune system is worse as a direct result of doing your chosen diet? I would dare say exactly zero. How many of you feel like your immune system has been boosted because you've seen changes in your weight, you've seen changes in actual physical disease taking place in your body before you started, and now that you're eating this way, you're not seeing that disease anymore? How many of you feel like 
that eating your chosen diet, any of those that I just listed, has made your body healthier, stronger than it was before. Once again, I think it's going to be almost all of you. So for them to say, well, we don't have studies that prove, I don't need a study when I have an N equals everybody here on Jimmy Rants. Because if you're watching this right now and you've gone on one of these plans and you've found success, they're trying to make the argument that your success is invalid. That the reason you feel better has nothing to do with your nutritional change. I would love to know what they think it actually could be attributed to. Uh, is it because you have a brighter perspective on life? Is it because you're more confident? Is it because you've found a tribe of people that are uh, think commonly to you? What do they think is attributable with all the people that talk about the benefits that they get from eating keto, paleo, carnivore, Whole30, real food, intermittent fasting, whatever you're doing? I would really love to know what their theory is. I know what they would say. Well, that's just anecdotal. You can't really count that. We need randomized control clinical trial, blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, when they try to tell us about eating a diet high in fruits and vegetables, show me the randomized control clinical trial that that has efficacy. <laughs> they don't have it. Or they'll cite epidemiology or observational studies or rat studies and, once again, talking out of both sides of their mouth right? The bottom line is if you eat a particularly bad diet, like if you're under eating or you're routinely missing out on vitamins, it's possible that could slightly weaken your immune system. No, there's no slightly about it. If you're under eating calories, your immune system will be down. If you're lacking vitamins in your diet because you're not eating the foods that have the vitamins that you need to boost your immune system, that will make it worse. Let's stop pretending like there's not good nutrition, good vitamins that are found in real whole foods, regardless of the form. Be it vegetables, be it red meat and other sources of animal-based foods, whatever your choice, make sure you're getting all the nutrition you need. Let's not pretend like it's only uh, slightly weakening your immune system by not having these. The body is required to have various things. Now, there's some internal things that can shift things around if you don't get enough of something. But there are things called essential vitamins, things like fatty acids. Those are essential. Essential meaning the body can't make it, so you better feed it to you. And if you don't feed it to your body, it starts to adjust and respond in negative ways. And what's the first thing that gets hit? Your immune system. So let's not act like it doesn't matter. Essential fatty acids, essential amino acids, which is a protein. And so there are a variety of essential amino acids and the only foods in the entire world that have every single one of those in every bite that you eat is meat. Yep. This doesn't mean you need to eat keto or anything else. No, you don't need to, but it sure the heck would help you. I hope people watching this right now say, oh crap, I bought into the propaganda. I need to start eating meat again. I hope that that's your response because your body deserves to be in the best possible position it can be to be healthy and it can't do that if your immune system is compromised and you're out there worried about the coronavirus. Can I tell you something else about this coronavirus thing? The stress that people are under as a direct result of the hysteria, is far worse than anything else. Don't stress about this. You stress about this, there are so many things hitting your nervous system. You might have been in a parasympathetic state, which is kind of a chilled, calm, relaxed state before all this hysteria, and now you're worried and your body is just sitting there just quivering and that's moving you over into a sympathetic state, which is no bueno. Whether you get the coronavirus or not, this stress is not healthy for you. Take a chill pill, go sit in a sauna, go relax, get a massage, go to a yoga class, something to get this stress out of your body dealing with this crazy 
non-disease that's going to impact you. Yes, coronavirus is real, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't have to be this hysterical thing. They make it sound like it's the Black Plague in the media coverage, and it's not. It only means that if you've been getting by on a few cups of ramen noodles a day, you should probably branch out. Who is just eating ramen noodles? Other than college students, who is just eating ramen noodles? Uh, make sure, this is my favorite line in the whole article because it's so silly stupid. Make sure you're eating like a normal human being. So this person at lifehacker.com does not think you and I are normal. I can't tell you how normal I feel right now. And all I eat pretty much is red meat. And I feel more normal than I ever have in my entire life. Don't ever let anybody try to convince you that your diet's not normal. Just because it's not like what everybody else does doesn't mean it's not normal. I suppose it's abnormal, but look at the majority of the population. They're freaking out about this coronavirus. They've got all kinds of cardiometabolic diseases going on in their body. Meanwhile, us abnormal people, we're not worried about coronavirus. We don't have disease ravaging our body. We're not worried about how we're going to get more energy, how we're going to feel better, how we get the aches and pains away. We're not worried about popping pills in our mouth to deal with pain or deal with some other thing that a doctor is telling us has to be solved by a prescription drug. We are abnormal and we are proud. Can I get a witness, anyone? All right, let's see what you guys have to say. Welcome in, welcome in. If you joined us late, we are Jimmy Rants, and we do this show uh, at least once a day, uh, sometimes twice a day. Today, this is the only one today because I do have plans at 5 p.m. Eastern time um, tonight, so I won't be doing another one today, but this is uh, today's, and I hope you've enjoyed this. JimmyRants.com, by the way, for the replay. We also are throwing them up on YouTube, so go check out the archives if you missed any of them. Uh, let's see. Fat shame is a form of abuse. It is. It really is. Um, mommy's running on empty. Thank you. It's just like the swine flu and all the hype. Yes. Wash your hands. Um, what are they trying to get our attention away from besides the stock market, uh, and the games in China? Uh, I, I don't know, Kitty Caddick. That's a good point. Usually when there's hysteria thrown out there, um, it is a distraction point, and of course I could go in a million directions of what I think it could be, uh, but I don't disagree with you that it is purposeful to get our attention off of something. Uh, let's see. Isn't it really just another form of the flu, says Tail Redhead? Yeah, uh, I hear it's a little more intense uh, and a different strain than just the regular flu, um, and so I don't think the regular flu vaccine would work for it, um, which is why scientists are working on it. Now, again, I don't think you need a vaccine if your immune system is strong. Germs will help boost your immune system. Some germs are okay, exactly. Too much hand sanitizer kills all the healthy bacteria on your skin. See, you guys are hearing me. You guys know this stuff. I hear about that whole thing only from paranoia-driven friends or occasional videos or on the Weather Channel that I don't watch anyway, says Cat. Exactly. Rachel says it also gets into your system and kills the good bacteria in your gut. Thank you for that, Rachel. Right, so when you use hand sanitizer, this is an organ on your body, the skin. It will seep through in your skin and get into your blood system and go and kill the gut bacteria as well. So you're exactly right. I stopped, when I found that out like 10 years ago, the hand sanitizer was actually making you more unhealthy, I stopped using it. I got rid of it. Now, I still wash my hands. Obviously, I go pee. I'm going to wash my hands. But I'm not sitting there scrubbing and obsessively washing my hands. Beth says just yesterday, a woman brought in her child to get a haircut. She was sent home from school because she was running a fever. Low immune system. Um, can you do the sick person impression again with the sneeze on the end? <laughs> Am I here to entertain you now? Mommy's running on empty. Um, okay. <coughs> One, two, 
want to touch my hands? <laughs> oh, I missed having fun on Jimmy Rants. Ah, uh, let's see here. Whew, I got a little lightheaded doing that. Just kidding. Keto definitely can help your immune system become optimal. I never wipe down shopping carts with sanitizer before putting my kids in it. They can touch it, lick it. Guess what? They never get sick, says Kat. I don't know about the lick it part, but touching it, maybe. Um, I live in the Tampa Bay area, and it won't prevent us from doing any of our activities unless they cancel school and classes. Yeah, um, I know the uh, National Basketball Association has talked about like not letting fans high five or shake hands with players anymore and they can fist bump. It's so funny. I guess this part of the hand doesn't like transmit disease. What if you've got the coronavirus there and you, and then you, you see what I'm saying? It's kind of weird. Um, and then the, I know in Italy where coronavirus has hit really hard, they're talking about doing some sporting events with nobody in the stands at all. That would have to be weird used to having maybe 10,000 people in a stadium and then suddenly there's nobody. If you're a sports person, you, you definitely feed off the noise of the crowd. Bonnie says, I definitely feel better on keto, eat healthy, exercise your mind and body and sleep as well uh, on the way. That's awesome. Uh, Ilza says, good luck. Most of the world eats meat and we will not give it up. No. Um, oh, that's a good point uh, that Elise made. 49,000 people a month die of HIV. But where's all the media about that now? 49,000, that, that's really high. I didn't realize HIV killed that many people a month. That's interesting. Uh, but you're right, we don't hear anything about that anymore. But it's not the uh, hysteria that coronavirus is because it's old news. And Kat makes a similar comment. Tens of thousands of people die from the flu. No hysteria at all. How come? Once again, it comes back to let's create a false hysteria so that eyeballs will look at the news and then our advertisers are very happy because we have ratings. You see how this works? I hate to be so jaded about it, but guess what? I'm jaded about it. It's real. <clears throat> The cows and pigs are harmed, is what mommy said. That's funny. Um, let's see. Everyday carnivore-ish and much healthier, says rolling low carb. Yes, exactly. Cariana says, disease aside, I'm the only one in my office who has not been sick this year. Yeah. Immune system gets stronger. Gets a lot stronger. <laughs> if keto be wrong, I don't want to be right. Um, Lady Lixel, two and a half weeks carnivore food related allergies caused my lymphatic system to become overtaxed. Now, remarkably stronger immune system. Yes. Uh, Scotty says, I just don't want to be stuck inside hungry and I don't want to be sick and dehydrated. So eat plenty and drink plenty. That's how you solve that. The doctor I work with does elbow bumps. Oh, an elbow bump. I've never done elbow. I've done fist bumps, but I've never done elbow bumps. All right, let's go over to my wonderful people over here on Facebook. Hey, guys, what's going on? Let's uh, scroll back up, see what you guys have to say about what we're talking about here. Joanne says, it's crazy. We live in Thailand and we're not scared at all. We wash our hands frequently and don't touch things like handrails. Yeah, I've never been one that when I go upstairs, I feel like I have to hold the rail. Unless it's really, really steep uh, stairs, I pretty much just, I power through and don't even touch the rail. Uh, Tracy says, keto made our immune system better. Yep. Uh, and meat is mother's milk to me. That's cute. Don says, I'm 74 years old, going on 25, eat a balanced keto lifestyle and meat every day and feel fantastic. That's awesome. Lana says, my immune system is boosted, definitely healthier and stronger today. All right. So guys, 
that is what I wanted to say about this crazy coronavirus thing. Um, it is amazing, the hysteria that's out there. Beth says, I can't remember the last time I got sick. I start to feel like something's coming on. I don't run for an over-the-counter band-aid. Just let it run its course. I believe uh, that his who's in my body's natural ability to ward off. Yeah, oh it, oh, it improves your body's natural ability to ward it off. Yeah, it does. So when you get these headlines that are mocking you for eating healthy and thinking that that eating a healthy diet like a keto diet, like a carnivore diet, is somehow not doing things beneficial that would prevent the coronavirus or any other kind of disease from hitting you, um, bite me because, yeah, yeah, it is. Keto cricket, I get a cold but no antibiotics since going keto. Yes. All right, guys, that is it for this episode of Jimmy Rants. Hope you enjoyed this. And uh, yeah, keep eating your meat and you will be healthy for life. So that's it for this episode of Jimmy Rants. We will be back again tomorrow with at least one, maybe two episodes of Jimmy Rants. So until then, we will see you then. All right. Oops. All right. I got a call right as I ended that. That was weird. I think it took it away. That was weird. Like right as I ended my uh, podcast, I was getting a, a, or my show, I was getting a call on that phone and now it's taken me to a screen I don't recognize. Ugh. That sucks. Because <laughs> I didn't save it. Um, that really stinks. Shoot. Oh well, I hope it's still there. Um, I'm, I'm recording on three different devices, so I got it somewhere, but that was weird. Ah, so I hope you enjoyed that, you guys. Thank you for watching Jimmy Rance. I'm going to pop off of here because I do have some things I want to get done today, but thank you for hanging out. Uh, yeah, sorry I won't be doing one later today, uh, but I will be back again tomorrow with a new episode. So we'll see you then. Bye, guys.